Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to look at a final exam problem that I gave for my spring 2021 semester. So we're going to go through it. Um, this involves pretty much everything that the course teaches. It uses uh, division, uses function calls, uses uh, stack manipulation, and everything else that you could imagine when it comes to that. You know that kind of stuff so here is the problem <clears throat> excuse me so this time i didn't give you all of the code i gave you some of it and uh, so like down here i gave you the main but i'm expecting you to fill in the details here and uh basically i just you know i was my, my youtube feed showed me this problem and you know and i just figured out oh, this would be a good one for a few of my classes to you know as a final exam problem so you have a wheel and you spin the wheel and it has three outcomes and they're all equally likely and we're not going to play like is it rigged or no it's, it's, as far as we know everything is on the up and up and so of those three possible outcomes you could say you can get a zero a one or a two and if you if you spin the zero then the game is over but if you spin a one or a two you collect whatever money you know if it, if you you know if you spin a one you get a one and if you spin two, you get two. And you just keep spinning until you spin a zero. And you get to keep whatever it is that you've collected along the way. So the question, my question here is, running some code here, what do you expect to, on average to be the outcome? You know, like if I, you know, if I play an average game, you know, it's, what would the result be? And say, if, without giving too much away, which you know, I will be giving it away here in a second, that the, the actual expected result is three, like exactly three. Like if you, on average, you will win $3 if you play the game. Of course, you, you, could, you could win zero, or you could win 20, depending on your luck, because it's just a game of luck, and you know there's no skill involved according to what this is going on. So that's the idea here, and the play function here is going to simulate one game, and then the whole point was that the main function is going to simulate a million of them, and then we're going to figure out what's going on here. So let's play around with the main. Let's get the main working first. Let's in, at least print out the stuff, and then we can get a go ahead and do this kind of stuff. So this is your typical loop. Total is zero. I wouldn't use a global if this was a real C++ program, but I'm doing this for the sake of just testing your ability to use a global and then in here inside the function I'm testing your use of a local and I didn't even use parameter passing for this problem I just I just you know because it's maybe something you're we haven't really covered but of course we've covered this how do you how do you how do you have a function that doesn't take any parameter so we'll we'll, we'll go through this and we'll see so uh, in the main I can move into the ECX register one million there we go and I have my loop I'm just doing this a million times and, and so I, that covers everything here right because I'm subtracting because that's what this that's what the loop operation does of course right it subtracts one from ECX and then it tests to see if it's not zero or in this case it'll be greater than zero because it, you know it's never gonna loop it's never going to decrement itself past zero without being caught by the loop operation here. And if it did, uh, you have a faulty CPU, and we probably should have that checked out. And so uh, that's my move and my loop. And then inside of here, I'm going to need a total. I'm going to need a I'll, I'll use a sign D word. Actually, you know, I'll use a D word. Nothing's going to be negative, so I'll just use a D word. And then, and then I will set it equal to zero off the bat. But what I would love to be able to do is just call play and notice again I'm not there's no parameters so I don't have to push anything onto the stack I can just call it directly the EAX register according to what we're talking about over here since there is a return value on it the EAX register will hold the return value so let me just put this in real fast here uh, I'll call this play proc and ret we'll fix this up of course in a minute and NP we have that going for us so at least it'll assemble if I try to run you know if I try to play this right now run it and I call play and when this thing returns what I want to do is I want to add whatever is in the EAX register to whatever is in total because that's what's happening right the EAX register will hold the result and then 
this down here. This will be result in the EAX register, and I can just add that into whatever total is. And that's what that's the whole thing. The whole loop is complete here. And just for the sake of trying this out, let me try, let me just put a let me just put a number like this in here. I mean, not too big, but not too small. Okay. So this is just to test it out, and I'll replace it with zero in a minute here. Okay, so now I want to do some printing. And so I need to have uh, I'll just I'll just call it expected value uh, print, EV print. And this is my string byte, and I say expected value is with a comma zero. So now what I can do is come down here, I move into the ED, oops, EDX register um, total. No, aye, aye, aye. offset of EV print, thinking ahead here, and then I call write string. Okay, so I can run this right now, just at least make sure everything I've done so far at least will run for us. And um, I can't tell, did, oh, I think I might have broken something. What did I break? Let's find out. My jump label, oh, loop, yeah, 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 loop ECX. Loop again, you guys are screaming, what's wrong with Brad? It's, I don't know what's wrong with Brad. Anyway, so let's try this out now. There we go, fixed up, simple mistake. Expected value is, and there's my printout, and of course my total is going to have this number, but I want to I want to divide this by a million and then mod it by a million. And the reason I did this is, uh, at least in our course here, we don't touch floating point math. So, and since we don't, I could very easily do floating point division and all that kind of stuff if we knew the knew how to go about doing it. We're just using integers here, so I just try to approximate that. So what I can do here is I can. Uh, I'm going to divide by a million, so I'm going to move a million into EBX register. That's 100,000. There's a million. I'm going to move into the EAX register, the total. And then I'm going to CDQ it so that I'm ready for my division because I, want to, I have to fill in both EAX and EDX correctly to be able to do the division. And so now I can call IDIV and I can say IDIV EBX. And now the EAX register will hold the quotient of the result of the division, and the EDX register will hold the will hold the uh, uh, the mod, which is in this case because I'm dividing by a million, this will hold the fractional part. So now with the EAX register holding the quotient, I can call write des or di write decimal. I can move into the AL register a period and then call write uh, character. And then I can move into the EAX register, whatever's an EDX, because that's the modulus of the division. Again, EAX is already, that's why I'm calling this directly, because EAX holds the quotient, print a dot, move the, move the remainder, move the modulus in, and then call write des, call CRLF, call wait message, just to finish everything off. And let's see. And of course, because I changed the value of total, I get something as crazy as this. <laughs> ah. And the reason for this is, I think it's because, let me find out here, SD word? Is that all? No, it can't be there. Hmm. Let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, so after looking at this a brief second, I run this and I go, I could just get crazy values here, right? This is not what I'm expecting to see. I put a breakpoint in just to test it out, and you can see it's coming out all crazy style. And I, I, only, I believe it's because, at least in the moment, the EAX register is completely borked. So let me just, because it's coming in with garbage from whatever the program's running, and I'm never setting it to anywhere. I'm just using it, garbage in, garbage out. So let me just put a zero into the EAX register here, and it should come out. There we go. That is much better. That is much closer to what I was expecting to see because I, I, I chose a value of 2.16 million. If I divide 2.16 million by 1 million, I get 2.16. So, okay, so at least I know my main is working correctly and now it will be time to fix up the play function and then, uh, you know, final exam is complete. Okay, so doubling back here and just setting everything up. All of the rules for setting setting up the first round of pushes and pops, and so I don't have any parameters that get passed in, right? 
Nothing is passed in here in the play function, but I do have a local. And because I have that, I need to be able to move into the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, push EBP, and then set up the EBP register to point to ESP. So move EBP, comma ESP. And then since I have a local, this is where I can, I go ahead and I subtract off uh, from the ESP register for, and I can get rid of this now that we're going to set everything up. And then on the back end of this, of course, I need to pop EBP back. But then before all that, I need to add 4 to the ESP register. So the subtract 4, add 4, do a push, do a pop, and do a return. And since there are no parameters to return, I'm sorry, there were no parameters passed in, then I do not have to add any value to return. Only if I have parameters passed in, do I make ret4, ret8, ret, you know, ret whatever. And so that sets everything up. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to need to come back and do any more pushes and pops. We'll have to see how things go. And now we're ready to kind of push into the, the meat of the actual function here. So now uh, the win value is 0. So this win is going to be ESP minus 4. So I can move into D word pointer ESP minus 4. I can move the 0 just to set up the initial initial value here. And so now I have a loop, I have a loop, I have a loop. And so I'm going to be doing things over and over and over again until, you know, basically until, until I've, I've spin a zero. And I'm lucky to have the Irvine library that does this stuff for me. So, okay, so to do, spin a wheel, without even thinking about a loop, let's just do, let's just spin a wheel. Like just, let's talk about it with three equally likely possibilities. To be able to do that, I need the random range function, and I need to set the EAX register with the value 3, and that will, you know, when I call this function with the value set to 3, I will get a pseudo-random number that is either a 0, a 1, or a 2, because this means that give me a value from 0 to n minus 1, my n is a 3, so 0, 1, or 2 will be returned. And that's because there's a three here, but there's three possibilities, zero based instead of one based. And so there you go there. And so I can call the random range. And as we discussed here, if I get a zero, jump up, uh, compare uh, EAX to zero, the EAX register will hold the random number. So I'll compare to zero. And jump if equal, if EAX is equal to zero, jump to done. So I'm going to need it again. I'm going to have to have an unconditional jump again. Okay, so there we go there. So I'm, I've set my three, this and that, whatever. But if I fall through, then, then the value in EAX has to be non-zero. And in this case, because of it, the logic of everything we set up, it has to be a one or it has to be a 2. And so what we can do here is just add to whatever's in D word pointer ESP minus 4, that's our collection total, we just take whatever's in EAX. We don't have to do any other if statements. If it's a 1, add 1. If it's a 2, add 2. That's it. And then go back up and jump again. And then do it again. Pick another number, jump, maybe jump out, maybe jump out, maybe jump out. Let's see what we get. And I don't get, let me, sometimes I have to run this a few times to count. Nope, I'm getting, I'm getting a value that I wasn't expecting. Because again, we, we discussed this, that the expected value is supposed to be 3. So it's possible I didn't do something correctly. So I'll have to take another look here. Um, let me see what, uh, one thing that a lot of you did, uh, a lot of the students did here, was when you, you tried to use randomize. Because right now you'll notice, every time I run the program, I get the exact same value. And <laughs> forgot about that. I need to replace that with zero. I, I figured out what's going on here. And I'm going to get a printout of zero here now. Now that I'm thinking about it, talking, thinking, doing. And the reason why this, you know, I, I never set this back to zero. But now with this set to zero, it's doing all this work. But the EAX register is not holding the return value because that value is being stored in D word pointer. ESP minus four, right? This is where this is the accumulator is in here. The EAX register will will always return a zero because because the EAX register is a zero when I jump out. 
So yes, this function will always return a zero no matter what, and I will it'll feel like nothing ever happened. So right here, when I fall out, the contract says I have to move into the EAX register because the return value is always put into EAX. I gotta put in there whatever's at ESP. Oh my fucking. I swore. Brad swore! EBP minus four. Not ESP minus. And I can do that, run my program, the end of the term, right? And now I get a value of 2.997798. So again, sorry, I'm not redoing all this, this entire 20, 15, 20 minute video, but you get the point here. So now, we're, now we have a completely working solution. So let me discuss through, through this one more time now that I got my head out of my butt. Okay, so again, coming back, this part here is the setup. I need this because I have a local parameter. I do this because of the local parameter. I do not have any. Uh, I do not have any pr parameter passing. Local variable parameter passing. Oh my goodness, the words coming out of my mouth today. So again, this is in reverse order of this. So I subtract off ESP. I add in ESP. I pop EBP. I ret with nothing because there were no parameters. And now I set up my memory. This is my variable win. That's zero. Set up my EAX to call random range. Give me a number that's either zero, one, or two. And if it's zero, get me out, because I'm done. Otherwise, add that into my accumulator and do it again, and do it again, and do it again. And eventually I will come out. And when I do so, the accumulator needs to be put into EAX so that when I return back, it returns back the correct value. And then I take that value and I add it into the total, which is the, the grand accumulator here in the main that is using a global. And I do that a million times, a million times, a million times, and then I do a little division to figure out the value. I am all over the place today, but that's okay. That is always okay, a little all over the place. Okay, so now you see my value. But again, every time I run my program, I get the same value, 2.997798. And again, the expected value is 3. You're never going to get that. You can, you can theoretically get closer and closer and closer the more, more you play. But it's more, of, it's more of a function of how good is your random number generator than anything else. Because in real life, if we were playing this game with a real, with a real wheel and it was actually you know, a, a good wheel something that wasn't uh, crooked, then you would get three the more and more and more you play. But with this, we don't know the strength of our random number generator, and we're, going, we're using that as our randomness instead of the spinning of the wheel. And so we're, we're going to get something close to an expected value, but we don't know exactly how close, um, like in this case. And so the final thing here, a couple final things here is, Going back into this function and removing or and pushing and popping anything that was modified by our function that was that's not memory any register that was modified I would need an extra push and an extra pop but as you can see as you go through here EBP and ESP are already taken care of but everything else EAX was modified but that's okay because I need to return that but you don't you see nothing else has been modified by any of the lines of code. EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI and, e, uh, ESI, and EDI, none of them have been touched by any of these things, either directly or indirectly. Because like here, right, the loop instruction changes, wherever that is, the loop changes ECX, a division changes EAX and EDX, but we don't have any of that here. So this function is complete as I have it written. That's all done. That's one thing. And the other thing is for when it comes to you know the, uh, the randomize function. Some of you guys were putting the randomize inside of this here. And what randomize does is fixes up the random number generator so that it's based off the, the system clock and not just based off of whatever you know, hard-coded uh, uh, seed value. And so when I run this now, you'll see that I get values. Oops, oh, it, did it crash? Nope, it didn't crash. That was just my system telling me that this thing is a virus, which is not. But you notice I'm getting 3.28, and I'm getting 3.41. Holy cow, right? And I'm getting 
3.43, not even close. You're like, what am I doing? And the whole thing is, and this is something that everybody has to learn about random numbers and, and, and setting up the random number generator, is that when I'm calling randomize inside of a very tight loop, right? This is a, this thing is getting called, oh, this play function is getting called as fast as possible a million times, is that the randomize is based on the system clock and based, probably based on milliseconds or I don't know what. I mean, it depends on, it depends on the implementation. And so when I call randomize inside of a tight loop, it's resetting the random number generator seed so that it's going to run the same number over and over and over and over and over again. And only when time passes will it change. So you're going to get a ton of different iterations that use the same value. So instead of getting a 6, then a 2, then a 4, then a 5, you're going to get like 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And of course, as you see there, it's going to completely throw off any of the calculations that you've performed. So the rule of thumb is, unless you have, you know, unless you otherwise need to do it, it's usually the first thing you do and only one time you, you do it inside of your main. So my 3.2, my 3.4, my whatever is now... 2.999, 2.992, very, you know, as, as you see there, close, th and it said sometimes, especially with the random number generator, you might get something, but on average now, you, that only happened one time, right? Now I get 2.997. And again, over a million throws, yeah, you might have a value that's something like that, but what if, I don't know how, let's see, what if I make it 10 million? The, the larger the number, the closer to the expected value you're going to see. And, and, and again, don't mind this. I just, just move the decimal point one place over. But you see 2.9996. Things are getting closer. They're approximating three more and more and more. And notice the more I run, I wish I could just run this. See, notice now I'm not getting anything. It's 30.1 or 3.01. It's, I'm getting cl very close to the value, 2.9993. Much better than what I was, you know, what I did when I got the three point whatever with one million throws. I know it seems like a million, a million plays is a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't when it comes to the law of large numbers. And so, you know, over time, there's my three point two seven again. You're not going to see that value if you do this ten million or a hundred million or a billion times or anything like that. So everything is going to cl more closely approximate three the more I run it. All right, so that covers everything I wanted to cover with this exam problem. Uh, this is it. The semester's over. And uh, hope you learned a lot. Hope you had some fun in the process. I think you learned more than you might think you did. It'll be more subconscious in the way that you code things later on. But as always, I know I misspoke a few times here. And if I did something or said something wrong that needs a correction, please let me know, either here in the comments or through email at swordb at cod.edu. And as always, thanks for sticking it out with me. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next time.